Hello everyone, in this presentation we are going to study about anion cap. So it is related to metabolic acidosis. We already studied what is metabolic acidosis in the previous presentation. So in the plasma we have anions and cations. Okay. In the blood we have anions and cations. Actually there is no anion gap. There is no anion gap in the body. We have created this anion cap to diagnose some of the disorder. Okay. In, in reality, there is no anion gap. Let me write anion here. Don't confuse for anion and anode. Okay. Anode is always positively charged electrode, but anion is negatively charged ions. Okay. So normally we have chloride, bicarbonate. Okay. These are the normally measured anions. It's about 86%. Normally measured cations, sodium and potassium. It's about 95%. Okay. But we have 100% of anions and 100% of cations. Number of positively charged ions and negatively charged ions are equal in our body. But we normally measure these two anions and these two cations. Okay. What are the remaining anions then? So there are many anions we are not measuring like uh, if you take many protein which contains charged ions we are not measuring phosphate generally we can measure in the lab right? okay sulfate even organic acids organic acids having said the when I said albumin it is plasma proteins okay many proteins we are not measuring they also contain charged because all proteins are made up of amino acids they are charged okay especially they have many negatively charged amino acids so usually we will not measure when we measure electrolytes what is the normal value of uh, chloride if you take chloride chloride value will be around 96 to 96 to 106 or 108 millimole per liter millimole per liter bicarbonate is around 22 to 26 millimole per liter this is the international units or uh, si units sodium is around 136 to 145 okay 136 to 145 millimole per liter potassium is around 3.5 to 5 millimole per liter so like this whatever anion we have in our body same amount of cation will be there in our body like cations, some cations we are not measured in routine lab, but we can measure in the laboratory, calcium, magnesium, everything we can measure in nowadays. But having said that in ABG analyzer, usually routinely we may, we'll take sodium, potassium, chloride and bicarbonate. So that means this is called unmeasured, unmeasured cations and this will be unmeasured anions and all this becomes unmeasured keto organic acid means keto acid all this becomes unmeasured anions okay so in reality there is no anion gap we have created this gap to diagnose we can die if you know the gap because there is definitely there is majority of cations but some anions we are not measuring so there is a difference between unmeasured cations and unmeasured anions is actually anion gap for how to calculate it's very easy we measure sodium and potassium okay this is cations and subtract whatever value we got bicarbonate and chloride if you subtract we will get an ion gap visually we write ag you add sodium and potassium and you add bicarbonate and chloride so whatever value you get after adding bicarbonate and chloride subtract it from uh, some total of sodium and potassium. The normal anion gap is around 8 to 16 millimole per liter. So the normal anion gap, we have created gap. Once again, I am telling there is no gap. It is only unmeasured anions. Okay, whatever when you say anion gap is unmeasured anion. So it is 8 to 16. On an average, you can say 12 millimole per liter 12 millimole per liter why this is important this is important because this metabolic acidosis we already studied in the last presentation can be 
normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So we can classify metabolic acidosis into two: normal anion gap metabolic acidosis and high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So as I mentioned here, let me draw a diagram. So this is the cations usually be measured. Okay, that means we have sodium. This will be our sodium. This will be our potassium because potassium will be less in in the blood, whereas sodium is more in the blood. I already gave the normal value here. You can see sodium and potassium. So that is about cations. Now we are interested in anions. Okay. So the major anion is chloride. We know that is about 96 to 106 millimole per liter. Then comes bicarbonate. It is 22 to 26 millimole per liter. This is unmeasured anions. Okay, this will become our anion gap. Or I will write here. This will be our anion gap because we are not measuring normal organic acid, keto acid, lactic acid, sulfate, phosphate, some plasma proteins. We are not measuring. So this is the normal gap. What is the normal gap? 8 to 16 millimole per carefully this is the normal anion gap so we are not taking unmeasured cations here because potassium and sodium covers 95 percent of the cation. so in case of high anion gap metabolic acidosis let me draw again anions here the chloride level will be same chloride level you can see same height okay chloride level will be same but metabolic acidosis in the previous presentation Metabolic acidosis means loss of bicarbonate or decrease in the bicarbonate. Because I am classifying metabolic acidosis, definitely there will be decrease in the bicarbonate. Decrease in the bicarbonate. So when there is a decrease in the bicarbonate and normal chloride, you can see here now what happened to anion gap? What happened to our anion gap? Anion gap is increased. So this metabolic acidosis is called high anion gap metabolic acidosis okay what are the reason now you can you know the normal acids organic acids lactic acid keto acids okay so all these acids when it will increase so it will increase in diabetic ketoacidosis in lactic acidosis like this okay diabetic ketoacidosis and lactic acidosis later i will give the mnemonics to remember what are the reason for high anion gap metabolic acidosis so let me write now normal anion gap acidosis okay first we'll see what is normal anion gap so this anion gap will be normal okay so there is no change in the anion gap no change in the anion gap but metabolic acidosis means definitely there is decrease in the bicarbonate Okay. bicarbonate level will be less now in both this both are metabolic acidosis okay both are metabolic acidosis this is also metabolic acidosis this is also metabolic acidosis we can see clearly this is the bicarbonate okay here you can see very less bicarbonate here also very less bicarbonate but here chloride level is there is increase chloride level okay increase chloride level so normal anion metabolic acidosis is also called hyper hyperchloremic normal anion gap metabolic acidosis so what is the reason where there is no increase in the acid acid is normal here anion gap is normal but still bicarbonate is less and chloride is more so a very good example for this normal anion gap metabolic acidosis is severe diarrhea severe diarrhea or diarrhea for prolonged period so whatever bicarbonate is there in the intestine patient will lose through diarrhea okay but there is no acid as such there is no acid generation so anion gap will be normal okay there is only decrease in the bicarbonate and whenever there is a loss of bicarbonate through diarrhea one negatively charged compound is going so our intestine try to make electrical neutrality so more and more chloride will be released okay more and more bicarbonate will be lost through the diarrhea so there will be more and more chloride will be released into the circulation okay that is the reason for increase in the chloride in order to maintain 
electrical neutrality negatively charged ion is going patient losing through the area so more negative charge another negatively charge will compensate okay chloride will be increasing this is called normal anion gap metabolic acidosis diarrhea and also renal tubular acidosis so renal tubular acidosis is a and diarrhea is a very good example for normal anion gap metabolic acidosis so we have high anion gap metabolic acidosis okay what are the causes you remember dr maples okay? dr maples okay you need not remember all the examples but just a mnemonic so that it will be easy for you whenever anyone asks what are the reason for high anion gap you can if you, at least if you remember two or three it is good d stands for diabetic ketoacidosis r stands for renal failure renal chronic renal failure or nephritis okay m stands for methanol toxicity a stands for alcohol alcoholic ketoacidosis alcoholic keto acidosis t stands for paracetamol poisoning that also leads to metabolic acidosis l stands for lactic acidosis lactic acidosis e stands for another poisoning it's called ethylene ethylene glycol poisoning okay ethylene glycol poisoning s stands for salicylate so drug actually as aspirin okay salicylate poisoning salicylate poisoning or toxicity okay all these causes are high anion gap metabolic acidosis okay? so similarly normal anion gap metabolic acidosis so loss of bicarbonate through lower intestinal tract that is diarrhea is this not mild diarrhea severe diarrhea even in pancreatitis okay because we know that bicarbonate is coming from pancreas okay pancreatitis and renal tubular acidosis renal tubular acidosis so in renal tubular acidosis there will be defect in the secretion of hydrogen ion but bicarbonate uh, reabsorption defect will be there bicarbonate so there will be renal tubular acidosis okay so this is about anion gaps